and I can tell you this from experience, you won't be able to speak. From experience. Experience. You will not be able to speak. All right. Okay, so just tell me, are you recording something, testing? Yes. No, no, I'm not. I'm a liar. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so... All right, let's just do a nice little sound check again. Um, with the mania, now I heard this on the radio this morning. What'd you hear? Um, and I don't know if you tuned into Q. I know I'm not invited. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't invited. Q said we're not right. Q said they weren't airing anymore. I believe them. So, <laughs> so, so, one, <laughs> so one of the guys. Are we recording this? Is, uh, is, so. <laughs> is a huge is a huge wrestling fan. So oh yeah, the the, the third the fourth guy. Yeah, well he's, he's, that that guy's useless. He well, is so useless. Well, Gavin, Gavin, or Garbin, 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 uh, Garbin. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, that tells you all you need. So to he know got about asked the role. question. He goes, and I'll pose this question to you guys. Yes. Okay, dead or alive, which wrestler would you like the finishing move done on you? <laughs> done on? I don't know. Some of them are deadly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 maybe I'd vote for The Rock. It's a little more of the, yeah, the safest one. Oh, for safe, not the for rock, The Rock bottom? That's like, yeah, it's pretty standard. You could, you could, right. It's no, pretty standardized that you could easily... No, no, Undertaker's move is dangerous. If you Undertaker's, know. Undertaker's, <laughs> Undertaker's move will cripple you. Well, th- that's why I'm saying maybe someone wants I, to... I, I, anyone who does a pile driver, fuck no. That, that oh, is the yeah, one. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Maybe a body slam. Stunner? Uh, st- Stunner's yeah, safe. Stunner's the safe thing. Uh, pedigree as well is not so bad. Well, you had your chance, so it's the rock bottom. Yeah, I had the rock no. bottom. Uh, figure four, because... <gasps> I would have a chance, like Stone Cold says, to turn him around and reverse the pressure. No, my and I would stand a chance to get out of it. From what I can tell, that move, if they actually locked it properly, would fucking hurt. Who knows? Uh, I've, uh, from what the way I've seen it, you've got you're pushing one person's foreleg against the other shin. That's why you got to turn it around. I know, but you can tell that the right leg is never hooked under no, the other person's no, no, thigh. Never, no, That would break somebody's leg. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. You, you'd yeah. sh- you'd break it. I, right? I don't have an opinion. I don't no. know. I have no opinion. Oh. You would take the big leg from Hogan. Oh. Yeah. All you do is just lie down. All you do is just lie down. No, just lie down. He does all the work. Remember first... First, he has to hit Hogan while Hogan's like shaking his head yes. and getting back up, and he does like the finger wag, yeah. <laughs> and then he gets knocked out and he gets the leg drop. No, no, then he gets the boot to the face, the big, the big foot, yes. and then the leg drop. And then, yes. Oh <laughs> my God! Wait, so, who's memory? gonna speak for Big V? Oh, oh. my balls! <laughs> Guys are all fucking crazy. I'll, I'll take. What would he take? <laughs> he could take uh, oh who does the what? macho elbow? That's what I was thinking. That's it. That was coming out of my flying mouth. elbow. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Those were the words coming out of my mouth. Ooh, Ooh the cream always rises. He was a celebrity, but a punk. He was a celebrity politician, wasn't he? Ooh. The Macho Man. No. No. no, Jesse Ventura. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse Ventura. Ventura. So we'll let's get into him. that. We'll talk yeah, about Yeah, we'll get into that. That's a smart segue right there. Look at this I guy. I'm trying. The big I tried, but the I got it wrong. wrong. I got it wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did Jesse Ventura have a move? No. Okay. No, he was I, I, basically a giant clone of uh, Superstar... Was he just named Jesse Ventura, or did he have Jesse some... the Body Ventura. The Body, the right? Body. Ventura he was, was pretty not fit. his real name. Uh, by the time I started r- watching wrestling, he wasn't wrestling real name? No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was, like, just yeah. ringside. Yeah. Hulk Hogan is really Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he was, was ringside. Yeah. He still got a little bit of flair. <laughs> yeah. And he kept telling McMahon to shut up. Because when McMahon was just the ring announcer, yeah, yeah, was just, yeah. like, shut hosting up, the show. Shut up, McMahon! I'm probably the last guy to ever say that. Yeah. Welcome to the Crew Roundtable Podcast, brought to you by CrewRoundtable.com, a roundtable discussion of all the hot news affecting the greater Toronto area, featuring Big V, Marco, Gino, and JR, and now your host of the Crew Roundtable, the champ who runs the camp, Sal Champ. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Welcome, welcome back. We are back on the feed uh, here at thecrewroundtable.com. Hopefully you guys have missed us and you guys are just thirsty for more. 
thirsty bitches. So, <laughs> the way, to, only... way to talk down to the audience. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's why he's the host. Uh, yeah, ex- I can do that. I have a license in my pocket. <laughs> so um, we have for this for this comeback episode after our you know not too, not long hiatus. Uh, Big V isn't with us right now. He's uh, I don't know, helping blow out candles as we speak. <laughs> so we're gonna have to skip his intro. <laughs> listen to this, our podcast. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all I'm gonna say. Mark, welcome back. Glad to be back after a big break. Good, good, good. Gino, welcome. Thank you very much, Champ. Once again, for having us in your beautiful home. I oh, have thank missed you. doing this. Um, I've been trying to keep the feed populated, but we'll let people go to crewroundtable.com and see for themselves. Please subscribe and share the show with your friends and enemies. Yes, you've been topping up the feed with with hot takes with hot Gino. Takes. Excellent. Make sure all you got to do is, is just keep the feed locked and and you'll get hot takes. That's right. You you don't have to do anything. JR, welcome back. Thank you, thank you, champ. Uh, thank you for welcoming us into your home. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Uh, while we're on hiatus, I hope you used uh, the time to catch up with our back chat, ba- our back list. Oh. Uh, <laughs> listen to the old episodes you might have missed if listen missed if you're a new listener. And I believe I was listening to some other podcasts where apparently this is like a it's called TriCast uh, mm-hmm. area where you encourage your f- friends and family to try podcasts, maybe turn them on to podcasts you've been listening to. So I would encourage our fans, if you know someone who might like our podcast, tell them to try it. Yes, if so, know, perfect. Like, if you know someone or someone you love, um, yeah, turn them on to the podcast. There is no greater gesture of love than getting them to subscribe to the Crew Roundtable podcast. <laughs> There's no better way to say I love you than with a podcast. Than with a gift for the podcast. <laughs> All right, so... So what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about celebrity politicians, uh, famous people getting into politics. I'm going to let Gino uh, kick us off. Go ahead. So the United States of America has plenty of celebrity politicians. Uh, Canada, not so much. Um, But Kevin O'Leary is looking to change that, and I'm sure we're going to talk about him quite a bit going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, What... What we have seen here, at least what I saw in doing my research for the show, is that these celebrity politicians, um, they seem to flourish in times of hardship. Uh, They at least can project the appearance of hardship to gather support for themselves. Uh, They come with a lot of populist ideas, and the tag that they bring on them, the self-imposed tag of being an outsider to the whole political system, is something that they almost seem to wear with a badge of honor saying, I don't have a history doing this work at all. I have absolutely no experience being a politician, which is why I'd be great at it. Um, Yeah, they don't make a career. It's not their career. It's not their career because they've gotten rich doing something else. Yeah. One of the things... I'll comment on that. And so one of the things that I want to start the, the, uh, the discussion off with is, is governance some sort of specialized discipline akin to plumbing? Uh, some sort of manual trade. Do you have to put in some time at the lower levels, work your way up the tree, and unfortunately have to become part of the machine and build up that currency of political favors to get anything done in government? So I want to throw that out to the table. JR, mm. go ahead. Mm. I, I would agree with that statement. Um, from a civilian's perspective, being a politician looks super easy. You know, you're, you're shaking the hands, greasing the palms, kissing the babies. But once, you're, once you are in office, it's more than that. And, and, and if, you, if you minimize what's going on, if all you think is it's just a bunch of bribery and scandal, it's not completely like that. Yeah, the, bri- politics is definitely a, a ripe uh, area for, for, that, for corruption. But those, that, I mean, the, the fact that the government does work to a fairly significant degree, you know, um, shows you that people are actually doing something. Like, like, stuff, like this, the, the, the country, the cities, and the municipalities, they're not, they're not grinding to a halt. So, the, the, and, and so you, you do have to learn how the, how the process works. Right? You, you, there's no dictatorship. You don't just walk in 
and slam your fist down and think you're going to tell everybody what to do. In Canada, you can. Uh, Not automatically. Automatically, Uh, yes. You could. It's true. If you get the majority. Mm -hmm. The prime minister's office in Canada. the, The president of the United States wishes he had as much power as the prime minister of Canada. This is true. But it's not that they don't do anything. All right, and and you may be able to rule it within the country, but you still have to, especially define what you mean by "don't do anything." Because I have an idea of what their schedule looks like, and I'd like to hear what you have to say on it. You know, the, the, I would I would imagine that in a properly functioning government, if you're introducing le- legislation, you know, there, there's multiple processes to that legis- legislation. You know, the, having to have it written. You know, presenting it in question period. I'm sure there's committees that 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 work on these on this legislation. It's not all one sided. I mean, the, the committees are generally made up equally uh, of party representatives. So you have to work, be able to work with other people, in uh, in, in, in in this uh, in this environment. And to, and to think it's anything other than just show up and everyone listens to what I say is think is very short sighted. Now maybe the prime minister has a little more power, but when you go drop at lower levels, you know, the, the, in the premier is very similar. But in those cases, you could easily end up with a minority government, and you're not slamming your fucking fist down on anything. Then you really have to wheel and deal. No, no, move past the move past the fist the fist slamming down because, uh, for instance, a member of parliament. Mm-hmm. Here in Canada, at the federal level, right, an, M- an MP, uh, they don't sit on Fridays. The House doesn't sit Fridays because Friday is technically a travel day. Okay. Right? People need to get back to their constituencies. And if you've got someone out in BC or Alberta who's going into Ottawa to sit down, right, they need a day of travel to get <clears> back. <throat> okay. There's even people in Ontario, some of the people in the, in the northern ridings, Ontario does the same thing. I believe Friday they don't sit because it's a travel day. You've got to get mm-hmm. back to your, to your riding. Okay. So really they've got four days of passing laws. Right? They've got four okay. days of sitting down and actually doing something. Mm-hmm. No, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but just this week, <clears throat> I don't know if you saw that. Remember that video I shared with you? And Trudeau wanted to take Fridays off. Curtail the powers even more. So they wanted to so he wanted to he wanted to have them show up less, right? Yeah. And for his own office, he didn't want to be present in question period. Right. Mm. So he was trying to he was trying to lessen the burden on all the MPs. Right. And some people said, well, you can't do that. Like you're you're there. Your job is supposed to be sitting in parliament passing bills. Mm. Right. Um, the, we can't forget that with these politicians, half of their job is trying to get reelected. This is true. Right. So to say that they have an onerous job to say that, I mean, most of their job is trying to show up and be at the photo ops be at all the community gatherings on the weekend, being at the right places, talking to the right people, schmoozing the right hands, you know, uh, that is work. I think, yeah, and uh, it's not something you just pick up. I'm sorry, you don't exactly, just walk you in. you don't just pick it up. You know, maybe maybe uh, some celebrities have that ability, but they don't, not not in that, not to that degree and not in that environment. They, they, they're talking about schmoozing you know, to get the next project, the, ne- the next uh, p- part. I but think it's it, not the same thing I as think if, if you have a, a seat on the cabinet, if you, you know, elect, but if you're, let's say, you know, I'm Oak Ridge's member of parliament. If you're a, if you're a backbencher, just, yeah. all you're doing is the whip calls you and says, be here to vote on this and vote the way we tell you. Mm. That's pretty much all you're doing, right? Like, you, 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 you don't really have... Yeah, unless you're in that cabinet or you're sitting on some of the committees like JR mentioned. Yeah. You're not really doing much. Yeah. Well, also just to, just to, as a But the celebrity guys are not going in to be a backbencher. That's the problem. They're, they're going they, to be the chief yeah, of this, this is this is this right? is my mm-hmm. problem. This is my problem with these guys. Uh, especially the ones that are quote unquote self-made men. I you wouldn't expect someone out of university to walk in and 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 get not even to mention this, get the CEO position, but walk in thinking he he or she are going to get the CEO position. That person will be laughed out of the company right out of the interview. If I sat down in an interview out of a university and said, "So I'm here to I'm in here interview for the CEO position," there's no fucking way you would get it unless you were and even if you were some sort of super genius business whiz, there's no way without experience you don't get the brass ring. 
and to come out of, you know, from a non-political area. I don't care how many politicians you've met uh, in your in your business travels. If you have not done the job, to think that you are going to jump into king spot is ludicrous. Because you are clearly you are highly underestimating what that position entails. All right. So I'm uh, oh my. If if they were running for municipal government, I could understand that. Maybe the mayor after a bit. And, and you got to start somewhere. Uh, as long as you want to start at the bottom, I don't mind. You know, because they're citizens just like anybody else. There's some people that you know, go but, in the municipal and then they'll try a bit of provincial. And it's like, hey, I'll I've make been, it. I've got no problem with that. Like, you know, former hockey players have done that. Mm. Well, some of them become celebrity, uh, M, you know, MPPs. Uh, MPs. And that, I don't appreciate that. They, uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's a, there's a guy. There's, there's Ken a, Dryden? Ken Dryden, for example. You know, he that, that they're they're just there for easy seats. But there's a couple of examples on the Canadian side. I just I want to make mention of it quickly before okay. we move on, because then I want to mention someone who plays to your point about the kingmaker role mm-hmm. um, when it comes to celebrity politicians, at least here in Canada. Um, Ken Dryden. So you mentioned that. So our celebrities, of course, seem to be hockey related, mm. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, so we've got Ken Dryden. He's got a long standing history of federal federal service. Right. That guy was cerebral before he got into the game. Right, he was known for being a thinker and a doer. Right. Okay. I read a couple of I read I, I read uh, I read his um, one of his books, uh, really really good, um, and kind of it details how he went through learned French when he was mm-hmm. when he was going to play in Montreal so that he could speak to people like this guy. There's a there's a head on his shoulders. Did he have like? But has he done? Maybe not political office, but has he been politically motivated in the past? Like if if he's. Done before something. he played b- before he played hockey, I don't. No, 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 no. I'm talking know. between hockey and now. That I that I don't know, but he's had a successful career as a politician. Okay. Right. Um, Frank Mahovlich, Frank Mahovlich, the Big M, used to play for the Leafs. Okay. Uh, he is uh, he is a sitting senator, right? So he's been there mm-hmm. forever. Hmm. Well, the senator is an appointed position. Now, Senate that is not elected, and that's bullshit. Senate, I think, <laughs> should be burned to the ground. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah. a topic for another or, discussion. At the very least, oh, yeah. make it an elected position. No, I don't, I don't mind. It. Get rid of it. Raise it to the raise it to the ground because it's a waste. But again, let's not get bogged down in that. Um, Jean Beliveau, another hockey great. He was offered, and I did not know this until doing the uh, prep for the show. He was offered the governor general position. But he turned it down, reportedly. Isn't that for just a figurehead position? Well, it's the head of state. Oh, sorry, it's the head of it's the head of government. Yeah, but all you do right. it, which basically sorry. involves signing it's, the law into 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 legislation into law. But sorry, the governor don't vote general on it. is the queen's representative in Canada. That's right. And the queen is our head of state. So it's yeah. it's up there. Like the governor general can overrule the prime minister. Technically, I was not aware of that. Right. Okay. Um, so he, can can the governor general refuse to sign a law? Did they? Of does course. He, did they get veto power? Of course, because it doesn't become a law until the governor general signs it. Uh, yeah, but I didn't know if it was, if they right. had if, if they if that was part of their job to be that they had to sign laws without any decision yes. making involved. Yes. Now in practice, they sign everything. It's, it's never a rubber ha- stamp. It's never happened. Right? In it's practice, a rubber stamp. It's a rubber okay. stamp. But on paper, right, highest ranking political office in Canada, governor general. Right? Governor General is actually the one who tells the Prime Minister you're going to dissolve Parliament and you're going to have a, an election. The Governor General is actually the one who says, do you think that you can command the confidence of the House and form government? So the Governor General, at least in theory, mm-hmm. is, the one with, is the one with stroke. Except but it's, it's appointed by the government, so it become, they almost become a puppet the government. The government appoints it out, correct. And speaking to your point about people coming in and thinking that they should be the king, in Canada... 2011, we had Michael Ignatieff mm-hmm. come in and run federally. <laughs> yes. Right? Now, I don't know if he counts as a celebrity because he's more of an academic yeah. celebrity. Yeah. Right? The, in that case, he still has to get, yeah, he still has to be accepted by the party to, 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 to be the leader. So, so he was accepted by the party and rejected by the voting public. They got decimated in that election and then he mm-hmm. screwed off back to he the, went back to the he, States. he screwed off back to the United States and I think he didn't live here for 25 or 30 years before that's, coming back to right. try and become prime minister yeah so the people spoke as a, he was he was that celebrity person coming in almost hoping to be anointed as the prime minister and the people said we're not having any of that which again speaks to your point you can't just come in and be chief yeah right? exactly and I'm hoping I'm hoping that people will do the same thing with Kevin O'Leary 
I'm hoping that he is rejected. Mm. Yeah. I know some liberal friends of mine that have become conservative party members. What? what? No, no, <laughs> just, no, you don't. Ju- just, no, you don't. Just to vote on, on the, head of, uh, the head of the party. <laughs> No, they vote they against. against. Pick the pick wait, it wait, more wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait, wait, to pick wait. again. To pick. They joined, but whose banner did they join under? I don't know. Because don't these know. guys, the, the fourteen guys who are going out campaigning to be leader of the of the conservative party, they you just, just join. You just no, join. No, 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 you don't have to. Guys, you don't have to declare an allegiance. You no. join the yeah, party. Yeah, I think you just join. It's to fifteen vote. bucks, and you join the party. Yes. And you get a right to vote. Fifteen bucks for like a year. Yes, or two? but those. Like that. Yes, yeah. but those those guys, those fourteen guys who are going out and campaigning now to be the leader, mm-hmm. their window just ended on signing up new memberships. Yes, yeah, so yeah, it's two yeah, days ago. This is true. That's that's part of so the thing. So your friends. Did they go that extra mile and sign up under Kelly Litch or sign up under one no, of the other people? No, they just, they just no, they, I don't think it people? matters. No, because that's it not a vote. Yeah, so they matter. just went to the party. They just went to, they just, they just jo- joined the party for yeah. a vote. Go to and the they're going to go to the convention and vote? Uh, I think that, yeah, I don't know if they, I think you can vote in absentee. Every party does it differently? Like, I don't know, you got to go to the big, no, the big no, no, thing. No, no, so no, we can't I, do that. I believe it's impossible. That I believe the Democrats, so the new Democrats, I believe they vote directly for the chief. Right, so if you're a card-carrying member, you have a vote to whoever wants to be the leader. Uh-huh. The liberals, I think, do some sort of uh, some sort of uh, weighted system where it's almost like ridings, and the PC have another system. So it's not exactly a direct one vote one one vote for the leader. It's some sort of like proportional ranked ballot where you pick like your top three guys, right, and then. You have to get enough votes to make it to the next level of leadership voting, right? So there's 14 guys to start off, and it's like golf. They set a number, and they say, you got to hit this many votes, and then the top or the, the bottom six get dropped. And then all those people, that interest aggregates around the next person, right? I thought, is, is that the, who, which group is it? I think that's the, I, I think that's the PC way of doing I it. It's the almost liberals a did that too, where they, do, where, they, yeah, they, where they do, they they do the vote, the top X, X people get get uh, you know move on yeah and so there's a unanimous it's vote it's not a straight one person one vote this guy wins one shot that's it it's over mm-hmm. it's always the whole convention I have, I have seen I have seen m- multiple yeah, ways of yeah. voting and other ones too the, I think I, said, I think the liberals did that so, as so well. your friends actually paid money to do what to vote for someone else yeah to 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 to, 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 to or to been, not vote for O'Leary Basically, because that no, no, they, they, given they, the rank system. No, but it's not just O'Leary. Kelly Litch is, is a terrible person, a terrible human being as well. I think they voted, they, they joined to vote for someone who is at least more level headed. Okay. Kevin O'Leary is an idiot, and, Ke- and Kelly Lynch is extremely bigoted, and I don't think they wanted either of those people running for. Uh, running for office. Okay, let's not. Let's not. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not focus not. on Lich, <clears throat> yeah, right? right? Because you know her personally, so you can speak to her personality. But well, I don't know her personally. She didn't <laughs> <come> <laughs> over, she <laughs> over for dinner last week or anything. But well, we've know. we've seen her in the news. Did okay. you exchange uh, cards at Christmas? <laughs> well, I think she burned mine. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't have enough Canadian values. <laughs> why, is this, why is this a picture of a butt in my credit card? <laughs> but, um, okay, so the so um. O'Leary, right? Yes. So you just said something that we mentioned off the top, where you said, I think he's an idiot. Fine. But mm-hmm. you also said you don't think he's qualified. No, why I don't. Would, Okay, so why would you say that, and speaking more to the whole celebrity thing, but if you want to talk about him, go ahead. Well, he's primarily, he runs his businesses solo. He doesn't, he doesn't look like he's any kind of a shareholder. He's, all, all his businesses have been, looked at either been, he was the majority shareholder, or they were privately held, and therefore he doesn't really need to play well with anybody. You know, he comes off, he, he, he puts off this attitude. Now, whether that attitude is real, whether that attitude is, is fake, at one point, it doesn't matter. You can be an asshole, or you can pretend to be an asshole, and at some point, it's the same thing. Do you think he's reading from the Trump playbook? Yes, I think he was encouraged by Trump's victory, He's probably thought, you know what? I'm pretty popular here. Everyone knows me on the dragons. I think I might be able to grab that brass ring. He, because he because I saw, I saw his Facebook page. In his initial campaign, everything was fucking memes. Like he was memeing himself. 
He'd have pictures. Of, he'd have pictures of him, and he'd have that big, big white meme font. Hey, Justin, I'm coming to your job for your job. How do you feel about that? It, the, the jokes didn't make any sense, but they were clearly meme. I don't think that counts as a meme. They were meme. <laughs> I don't think that counts they were. As a meme. They, they were. They were visually constructed to as a meme to grab younger voters. I'm no. I have no doubt about that. But he put that question out as to like he because he skipped the first French language debate because he doesn't speak French. Yeah. Right. So he put out the question to the voting public and said, "Do you guys think I should run?" Like the only reason he's running now is because he got positive feedback. But that's but that's popularity, and this kind of goes back to one of our earlier uh, it, it's podcasts. Popular, it's popular he, through and through. Yeah, one of our po- one of our previous podcasts where we were questioning, like, given not just the local but the, the complicated things they have to make decisions on. The economy is not straightforward. Crime is not straightforward. International relations is not a straightforward procedure. To have Joe Schmo like us, who are experienced, have not a degree in any of that. You know, then vote on who's supposed to be making these care- carefully calculated decisions is is almost a joke in itself. But that's the way our system is is created. We get we get the pick. But you do have advisors us. too, right? Yeah, but we as we as voters aren't. It's we are, no. we're, we're we're self. We have to self educate on this. And you, you know, voting with your guts, someone who's who may or may not get us into World War Three, is ridiculous. Mm. You know. Uh, who, who could totally tank our economy with with, 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 with erroneous decisions. I know, but listen, this is... We should have the freedom I, I, No, to... I'm not saying we don't. I'm just saying it, it, it's conceivably laughable as a concept. I'm yeah. not saying it should be withdrawn and only certain educated elites should pick. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. just as... That's what Marco thinks. It, yeah. it's that's, almost, what, that's it's, what I think. No, it's almost as you, ridiculous you as having someone show up and saying, hey, guess what? I've never touched politics, but I magically know how to run this country. Mm. You know, just because oh, I've got no strings on me. I'm sorry, <laughs> everybody in business, everybody has strings on them, especially oh, yeah. to, to get that high. At one point, has strings on them. Either they've done favors for someone, they've done they've done expected favors, yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know maybe they owe someone money, uh, yeah. maybe they owe another country money. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Rachel Maddow, it's calm down. Uh, calm so down. Th- 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 to say he's got no strengths is probably tax wrong. Returns in that briefcase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, to say he's got there's no strings on Kevin Leary, I, I would I would clearly doubt it. Okay, before we I highly doubt it. So yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, James. Okay, before we get back to Mr. O'Leary, one of the things that I mentioned off the top was: Are there any good celebrity politicians? Okay. And I want to throw out an example of at least two that I found. Mm -hmm. Um, And now these are people that were in executive positions at, you know, state levels, provincial levels, right? We're not talking about mayors. Right. Because otherwise we could talk about Clint Eastwood and Sonny Bono and all these people. And those guys I don't, uh, those guys are a little more, I have a little more respect for. And those guys may have done a fantastic job, but really they were city mayors. They're not steering policy for the state no but at least they started small they started Uh, they 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 had a level-headed concept of what they could conceivably govern Mm -hmm. so uh first one that i want to mention um jesse ventura yes okay Mm -hmm. so he is he strikes me as a bit of a crackpot he's become a bit of a crackpot in his old age he's become more crackpotty as time has gone on very conspiracy theorist now now, i don't know if that's i don't know if that's just a face he puts on because he is still selling himself he is his own business that's true that's true he may just be fear-mongering but the guy was a navy seal right Mm -hmm. like he fought in he fought in wars right he's he's not that much of a lunatic and i want to put him forward as an example of at least a good celebrity politician because when he ran as, uh, when he ran to be governor of Minnesota, he ran as an independent. He didn't run for one of the parties. Mm-hmm. So it's not like Trump coming in and basically hijacking the Republican nomination. Right? Yeah. Because he should have run as an independent because he's not a Republican. Yeah. Right. And it's not like O'Leary coming in, seeing from the Trump hymn book, hymn book, where O'Leary's coming in, he's trying to parachute in as the chief of the conservative party. When really he should just be going in as a Ross Perot type guy, saying, "I'm a billionaire. I want to run for. I want to run for prime minister." Uh, the, unfortunately, the the Ross Perot tactic doesn't work in Canada. Doesn't work in Canada. Yes. But yeah, so it, it, the parallel is limited. 
But I see what you're trying to say. Now, for Ventura, his celebrity, and this is one of the things where I think being a celebrity politician is a good thing, or at least mm-hmm. aspiring to be a celebrity politician, he managed to get coverage. Okay, Because if you're not in the news cycle, you're a ghost of a memory, mm-hmm. yeah. of a dream. You're nothing. Yeah, right? yeah. if you're not being talked about, it's in, you're being forgotten. So Jesse Ventura was able to get coverage, even though his opponents outspent him by millions of dollars to discredit him. His whole campaign was $250,000. His opponents, as I said, spent millions, right? And yeah. he was able to cut through that noise. Mm-hmm. He came to power in 98, mm-hmm. started well. Some of the things he did I, are I'll still... Say he, his, and I'll, I'll say he wasn't a huge celebrity. He wasn't he a huge was celebrity, not no. Coming off of he was out he had been out of the wrestling business for many decades. You're forgetting Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't a big star. Yeah, but he you wasn't can a say big the star. name. No, he wasn't. He, he was, was a predator. He, he was he not a supporting man. He was not a he never starred in a single movie. He was okay, always He didn't star, but he was there with he, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, in he was a part, yeah, but he was a so, it was, it was a minor supporting actor. But almost a ca- a ca- yeah, but he I think, was not I think everybody not still knew But they you know the name. You could recognize him. You know the name. But he wasn't a starring star. He didn't come off of a multi-million dollar movie. It doesn't no, matter. Un- you, unlike, you know, Schwarzenegger. You say the name Jesse Ventura, people know. Some people do. Right? Most yeah. people. But it wasn't like The Rock, uh, you know, g- came off of, le- left wrestling and would instantly, and, 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 for example, would have instantly tried to run for the presidency. Like he had, his, 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 his heat had, had, he had cooled. Mm-hmm. His star was faded. Before we speak about Arnold, because he's the next guy that I want to talk mm-hmm. about. Um, one last thing on Ventura. Um, so he only ran for the, he only served one term. Yeah. Right? Because up, I think he just got disillusioned with the role. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the wheeling and dealing. Uh, and he just said forget yeah. it because he was there as an independent. He did a couple of things. Some of the things he did are still in force today. He put up some sort of rail system in the city that's still there in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Twin Cities. But he did a decent job. He wasn't plagued by scandal. Right? It's not mm-hmm. like he was forced to resign. It's not like he started lambasting everybody as soon as he got into power. But he did his job, and I think he just got disillusioned with it, and he said, okay, I'm done. Right? Yeah. Side note on him, uh, he tried to get Donald Trump to run as the presidential candidate for the Reform Party in 2004. So, you know, put on your tinfoil hats, anyone, anyone who's out there. Who knows how far back this goes? But Arnold. Mr. Schwarzenegger, I think he is an example of an excellent celebrity politician. Now, you were saying all these people about self-made men and they're not and blah, blah, blah. Arnold really is a self-made man. He is. He came here, didn't even know how to speak the language, and mm-hmm. became the biggest movie star in the world. In mm-hmm. Arnold's defense, he wasn't just a celebrity. He married into the Kennedy clan. He married into royalty. So he, he was, was he a was, celebrity he, and he married into Maria royalty. Maria Shriver was, is part of John F. Kennedy's family group. Yes. So I did he not was, know yeah. She's he yeah, she's, she's the Kennedy. She's a Kennedy. He, uh, ironically, a Democrat. Uh, and he ended up running for the Republicans. Exactly. But um, mm. so he came in to become governor of California, right? Yes. Now this was in two thousand. Wasn't that after the outgoing, uh, the existing one got got uh, kicked out because he, he ran a deficit or yeah, something? Yeah, and like five hundred people ran <laughs> to be a governor. Um, I remember that one. So he came in once again, no scandals, right? He started in uh, 2008. He spent seven years there. So he was reelected once. So people thought that he did a decent job, right? Mm -hmm. Um, By all accounts, just in general, he was regarded as a problem solver. And he worked within government to get things done, right? It's not like his governorship set anyone's, you know, heart aflutter, right? He's not going to be remembered as great and fantastic, but he spent seven years there, got reelected, I did think, the job. I think the reason he left is because he had the, the 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 big the big scandal with his with his uh, maid broke around that oh, around yeah. the end of his uh, rule. I, I and he stepped down. I think so, that was after. He yeah, left. was it? I thought it was near the end. It was start. I think it was starting to come out. I think may, that may be why he didn't run, is because they saw it coming. Did he resign? He no, no, he just may, he may not have run again because no, he, he probably ran, expect- got reelected, and chose he, not to run again. He went full term, but for being <laughs> reelected, Bush forty three got reelected, right? So I don't know what being reelected 
means, really. <laughs> like, I don't know what type of referendum that is. Let's, let's not forget that Ronald Reagan was a celebrity uh, mm-hmm. politician as well. Mm-hmm. Ronald Reagan was a celebrity politician. Also in yes. California. Mm-hmm. Yes. He, uh, he, people don't realize, but if, if anyone remembers uh, the, the, the throwback to uh, the original Back to the Future... Yeah, when, the uh, actor. The, yeah, the yeah actor. When, when, when Doc Brown asked Marty who the president is, and he says, is Ronald Reagan... Uh, Ronald Reagan was an actor in yeah. his day. Uh, not a lot of uh, when I found out about it, I was I was flabbergasted. But yeah, he was he was an actor that turned politician. Now, whether he slowly got into politics or or if he just decided I'm going to just instantly become mayor the uh, mayor uh, governor of California, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think his I don't know if his acting helped him out that much, right? Like cause uh, really, in California, like, it might have. Yeah, but how big a star was he really? I don't know. I I I, I wasn't around in those days, so I'm. Um, and I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about his pre pre. Uh, yeah. poli- his political career has completely eclipsed any acting career he had, but uh, but he sure. was an actor for sure. Yeah. yeah. No. After that, he went. Uh, he went. He worked. For, I don't know if he worked for GE, but he would go around to GE companies in the United States and, and talk and speak. Yeah. Well, they all do speaking engagements yeah. after. But right? like that's, that's all for GE paid. though. All for GE. Yeah, oh, I'm sure you received lots of money from. Yeah. It. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, that, that it, it's it's all you get. You get a lot of money on this. Oh yeah. And then talking two speaking, million so. dollars. So, Easy peasy. So so those are a couple of celebrities or celebrity politicians that I think are good, mm-hmm. and that actually did a good job once they got elected. But that might be the minority, right? Like if we want to look at other countries, wasn't there the porn star that ran in Italy? Did she ever? Oh yes. I don't think she. I don't know if she won. Did she end up winning? Or no, something, no, no. or did uh, she just turn no, it into that, a farce? That 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 no that 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 election that was after what's his face stepped down was it not? After Berlusconi stepped down, <laughs> yeah, uh, she was one of the people who ran. I mean, she was probably a former porn star. To be honest with you, not, I don't think she was acting. Uh, Wasn't there working. someone else related to Mussolini? <laughs> his daughter. Yeah, his daughter. Yeah, Mussolini. No, his granddaughter. Mussolini's granddaughter. Oh, his granddaughter. His granddaughter. His granddaughter. Sorry. Granddaughter. Um, yeah, they all. They, it became the same circus as as as, as with with Schwarzenegger's election, where everybody after Schwarzenegger declared, everybody figured, everybody. hey, I, I I can do. I'm sure there was there there was more than a handful of uh, of uh, porn stars, pun intended, uh, that ran for um, office for the governor of uh, California. What's the pun? Uh, a handful of porn stars. Oh, so it's, a, it's a breast joke. It's reaching, <laughs> but you have to explain. I thought a joke. it was a when penis you have to explain joke. a joke. It's lost. <laughs> it, okay. it, it could have gone multiple ways. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, Champ is giving me the wrap-up sign. So um, <clears throat> let's go out on this note then. <clears throat> so there's no way for us really to tell if a celebrity is going to be good at the job. Mm. Right? That's right. No. Even uh, you can you can kind of predict it from their bravado, and from their previous work. I think you can. From their previous work, okay, but yeah. but that's all part of the whole electioneering campaign, right? It's mm-hmm. about as we were mentioning, uh, selling uh, memberships, bringing money into the party, right? Well, if that's someone, the thing. I think that's another part of the job is bringing money you into have the to, party. You have to bring money. You have to. You, you have, have to, to get sell. money in there. And even if you don't bring it in directly, you have to show that you're the chief. And people are supporting you by voting with their wallet and bringing yeah. memberships into the party. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So people do have a chance to do that. Um, the point I want to go out on before we go once around the table is, JR, you mentioned that uh, Schwarzenegger said, okay, I'm running. And then the floodgates opened, right? And everyone said that they could be part of it. And that, I think, is one of the good things about the celebrity <clears throat> politicians. Because at least it will it may spark people to get more involved in the political process and have these people run and realize that, you know what, if someone's not speaking out for my best interests, then maybe I should be the one to step up and do it. And that, I think, is the best thing that can come out of these celebrity politicians. Probably. I think you're right. Uh, you know, empowering Andy Joe Schmo to, uh, to run, you're probably right. Then again, it it also may make it look like it's difficult to run because look you've got these friends. guys coming out of nowhere and and, and 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 claiming hefty hefty spots may almost make it feel like well I'm just Joe Schmo on the street how how am I going to get elected I I wasn't in a television show your friends who went and got conservative party leadership or conservative party memberships this is true were they is ever 
I don't want to say that they were policy wonks, but were they? Did they ever care? Uh, they, yes, they, they they paid attention to local politics. Have they joined? To, yeah. Have they paid to join any other party before? This? No, I think they, I think they I, I think they only joined the 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 the, the, preser- the, per, the new the, the conservative party. Right now, like ah, yeah, because they, 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 they've ta- they've taken a hard right in the last in the last two years. Mm. Uh, almost since since true, definitely since Trudeau was elected, definitely, and even more so since Trump was elected. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, it's it's one thing to oppose the the, the, the party and the, uh, the the oppose the power the party in power. Fine, I will I will support. I can understand that, but that does not give them license to spew hate. Mm-hmm. Um, like they're doing with this Canadian values bullshit. And you know what? If you're a fucking racist and you have to candy coat your own language, it's because you know what you're saying is wrong. It's a test for everyone who wants it. Yeah. All right. It's one, I don't like someone going out and spewing racist hatred, but at least you're honest about it. And it makes it easy for us to know what you're actually saying and, and disagree with it. But when you candy coat it, like, oh, we want to make sure the right people come in and they share Canadian values. In this case, Canadian values is code for Christian. It's, that's no, no bones about it. And But they don't want to say that because they know what they're saying is wrong and bigoted. Mm. And, 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 and if that's the case, you shouldn't be saying it. You know, change what you're saying, not how you say it. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I think we're veering a little bit here. Sorry, it, it, it's it's a it's a sore point with me. <laughs> you have many sore points. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, Champ, do you want to take us? Once yeah. Around? So let's uh, let's let's start wrapping this up. Mark, what do you have? What, what's your thought on the celebrities entering the politics? So I guess I guess people at the top echelons of government should have some. Uh, experience with government just so that they can understand how government works and the, the machinery of government. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question is, even if they do understand how government should work, you know, are they, does that translate into good governance? And I don't, I'm not really convinced that that's ever really possible given how things are structured. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mark. Gino? When it comes to celebrity politicians, um, it seems like there's some good and some bad. Uh, We've gone through most of the major points here. Um, For my closing thoughts on the subject, uh, one thing that celebrity politicians can do is they can cut through the noise to get elected. But as Marco was just saying, what do they do when they're actually in office? Right? Um, There is an expertise that is missing. Uh, and one of the articles I was reading was uh, when I was doing my prep for the show, uh, and I love this term, um, they use the term boastful ignorance. So these people will stand up and proudly proclaim they are not part of the system, mm. they have no history with the system, and somehow that makes them more suited to do the job than the 30-year vet slogging through all the crap that they had to go through to get to the point where they could mount enough funds to try and run to be leader, to become the chief. Um, it wouldn't run, and JR has mentioned this in the show, in any other business segment, in any other facet of employment. Imagine going in and saying, I don't know anything about what you do, but I can do it better than you. You would get thrown out on your ass, right? Um, somehow that boastful ignorance is a, a desired trait in a celebrity politician. I don't agree with that, but they can get people interested, and mm-hmm. they do. They can and do get people interested in the political process. And for me, as JR's friends are voting out of spite and voting with their wallet for the PC party, <laughs> I say that is an overall good thing. So when it comes to these celebrity politicians, I am firmly on the fence. Yeah. Uh, I, don't mind, I don't mind celebrities using their celebrity to draw attention to the uh, process. Um, I don't. Uh, I think I can't remember whose election it was. If it was uh, if it was uh, Obama's first election or or who was this, um, when The Rock appeared at both the Republican and the Democratic conventions. Yes, I have no problem with that. Hey, it was balanced. It was on. They didn't. They didn't throw in favor of any one particular side. 
but they drew attention to the fact that we need to vote. And that's a really good message. Uh, the message of paying attention to the political process is an excellent way to use your celebrity while still remaining neutral. I fully support that. Um, you know, at one point, the, the, the celebrity is going to be a, a, an advantage, regardless of what level of government. But at least if you, if you start small and work your way up, you, 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 they're gaining experience. And... Uh, they, they gaining experience, and maybe they, they could actually grab at the breast ring, but at least there's a level of humility and a lack of bravado. I mean, I, I, honest to God, I don't see a lot of um, regular politicians being such loudmouth jackasses in, in, in political. They're always very controlled uh, and very... Uh, very calculated in, in the way they present themselves. Look at the difference between Mike Pence and Trump. And Trump, yeah. Trump totally is a wild guy. Different. Trump, mm -hmm. Trump so. is a wild man. Pence, Pence is the secret evil bubbling underneath. The oh, I, I totally agree with you, a hundred percent. I mean, I wouldn't even call Trump a cowboy because he's not. He has no. He's a space cowboy. No, he's a puppet president. <laughs> 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 So I, I so my, my message my message is, don't let celebrity popularity uh, fool you. Yeah, yes, politics is at best at at its very essence a popularity contest, but it should be a popularity based on competence and experience, not simply um, on what TV show they were on last week because that is not. That, to quote Monty Python, that is not a system of responsible government. <laughs> <laughs> Some watery tart lobbing a scimitar at me. Hang out to bed. Thank you, JR. And Big V just flew in from the sky. Big V, do you want to have closing words? As he's struggling with that. Okay, we'll give him 10 points for that. Lake Wilcox. Never no, too late to have one. That's not you, liar. liar. Don't lie. We've already talked about liars. More like Lake Focox. <laughs> lake Focox. <laughs> well, not just not just the lake of dildos either. <laughs> oh my God! I'm not touching that. I'm not touching that. I don't even know where that came oh, from. Chan, please wrap this up, Chan. Do you, 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 you want to have any up. parting words on celebrity uh, celebrity politicians? Giggity. All right. All right, great. Well, you know, um, I, I don't, I mean, I'm on the fence with celebrity politicians. Uh, they could do what they want. Um, I like the point that they get people involved True. in, in the process. Correct. You know, they get, yeah. they get people to start showing up to the... Actually, to the, the only one I've ever actually really kind of liked was uh, Jesse the Body. Yeah. Very, yes. I think, actually, I think he probably did a fairly decent job of we actually... We discussed him and I brought him up as an example. Yeah, you'll have to listen to the You'll have to go podcast. to uh, crewroundtable.com and subscribe to the feed. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know... Oh, um, we miss Big Apart from, from, from the experience, but, you know, if they know how to speak in front... Because, you know, the, the media will, <clears throat> will get you and you need those answers and you got to speak well. That's another thing that's important, right? Um, you know, if you got that on your side... And you can speak to the majority of voters. Uh, what's going to stop you? You know, you know what I mean. But I, I'm on the fence. I mean, for me, it doesn't. You and I, champ, uh, firmly yeah. on the fence. Yes, firmly. But I'm just. It's, I'm on a cheek. I'm not right. And then <laughs> you're leaning. You're leaning to the I'm right. I'm on a cheek. I can't handle like cream. You're leaning to the right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're a political man. Anyway, folks, I want to thank my guests, uh, Marco. Gino, uh, JR, and Big V, who just flew in. The angels just dropped in from the sky. With ketchup, Doritos, and and what is this? Pringles. Listen, you missed the party. You missed the opening party, so you can't. You can't. Minus 50 points. <laughs> what? I brought, I, brought, I brought it from Mark here. Minus 75 points. Ouch. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any show suggestions, tweet us at, at Crew Roundtable. Um, download the uh, the show at crewroundtable.com. Catch us on Stitcher, iTunes, Google uh, Play Store. Am I forgetting anything else? You got it all. That's all everyone. right, folks. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week on the Crew Roundtable podcast. Giggity.